Hey everybody and welcome to episode 7 of my How To Practical Spirituality and Mysticism series. And in this episode we go over the chakras, how we activate them, what kundalini energy is, and how we can really work with our chakra system to be able to master our lives. We do this all with the guidance of beautiful goddess Shil Bhutta, who is a medical intuitive and psychic. I hope you are ready for this because it is all the downloads, all the activations, and all the magic. Let's get this party started. Hi, Shield. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. The sun is shining and I see Asgard in the distance and I'm ready for it. <laughs> Um, so we're going to get straight into it, everybody. We're talking about chakras today and opening your chakras. So, Sheil, what is a chakra and why do we want to open it? What does that mean? Tell us all about it. So your chakra is your energetic body. We, as humans, believe that our body is just the cavity and that's it. But you are so much more than your vessel. You have your energetic body. You have actually seven bodies, but we won't go into that yet. It's going to be your chakra body, which is on your energetic body plane right above your body and within your body. And so your energetic body holds everything your physical body goes through as well as your environment. And so your chakras hold an imprint of everything you've ever felt and everything that you are coming into this life and everything that you experience while you're living. And so each chakra connects to different parts of your body. So your root chakra is connected to your confidence, but it's also connected to your bone structure. So those two go hand in hand. And so if you have an issue with mobility, if you have issue with feeling confident, if you have issues with structure and like, even if you're super ADHD, usually it's because you have to root yourself, right? You have to get ground yourself. And so if you work on your chakra body, your chakra body always, always, always heals your physical body because your chakra body heals it before it's presented in the physical body. The physical body is actually the last step of things interacting with you and expressing itself. So if you heal things on a chakra level, you can, your physical body will already fix itself because it's only presenting what's in your energetic body. And so each one of them holds an immense amount of power, which is why I chose Asgard, because it's kind of reminding us how much of a warrior we are within ourselves. And the minute we command what we need from our body and know that we have this inner power, we have magic that can awaken. And I love the idea. I always, when I'm trying to awaken a chakra, it's energy, right? So I always try to envision lightning bolts. So how can I open it? And so they're always open. I know people say, oh, your chakra is blocked and that can exist. Some of them are working kind of sluggish sometimes, but it doesn't mean that you're ever, ever, ever blocked. It's just doing what you need to do to make them work and flow together. I love it. And so you brought up a good point about, you talked about the lower chakra, the root chakra and how that can pertain to confidence and structure and our bone structure. So just on that subject, can you take us through the, the seven main chakra with like the idea of what each chakra like um, represents and how we can apply it to our lives? Can you go through a little bit of that? Yeah. So after the root chakra, your lower abdomen is your sacral chakra. Your sacral chakra is related to creativity. To um, It's related to passion. It's related to your childlike nature. It is also your sex organs and like all the things that make you expressive and expansive and fun. It is your fun area. Mm -hmm. And so your sacral chakra also holds a lot of your trauma. So if you are traumatized, trauma negates or like suppresses you from expressing your fun childlike nature. And so it's usually in that area. And so we work on that area to have you free flowing. Your sacral is also connected to the water energy in your body, the flow in your body. Like how do you digest food is actually connected to it because how much flow is going on. So your sacral is your lower abdomen. That's where you work on if you're feeling like you're passionately not aligned. Um, and so then after that, you have your solar plexus chakra. Solar plexus is your upper abdomen. It's yellow, 
we'll go through the colors again. So the root, since I didn't say the root is red, your sacral is orange and your um, solar plexus is yellow. And this is your confidence energy. This is your sun energy. This is your regenerative abilities. It is the electricity in your body. It's how everything connects to each other. It is also your digestive system, but it's also your confidence. And so it's your ability to metabolize what is happening and absorb nutrients. And all of that is connected to your confidence. So are you confident in your ability to really re like understand the world? Are you confident in what you can put out into the world? And that's all in your solar plexus area. And then your heart chakra in the center of your chest is about love and love for yourself, love for other people. It's giving, receiving, it's green, but there's also pink tint to it too. So green and pink are connected to each other. Um, and so in this area, it's all, you know, grief sits in this area. And this chakra is so important because it's the mid center of your higher chakras and your lower chakras and all of it intersects with love. And so when you are loving, it makes sure that everything's flowing in the way that it needs to be. So love is energetically the cure to all of it. And so after that, we have your throat chakra, which is in the center of your throat. This is about your self-expression. It's about fear is often logged into this area. And that makes sense, right? Because if you are suppressing your voice in the slightest, it's because you're fearful of something. If you are overly exaggerating and dramatizing things and speaking words of hate, it's because someone made you feel fearful about life that you feel the over need to overcompensate and aggressively say what you need to say because someone made you fearful. So fear is always in your throat chakra because the less you fear, the more you just naturally say what's coming to your mind. I mean, I always relate it to children. Children don't care. They're gonna say exactly what they want, when they want, and they don't think about how it's gonna be received. They say it with love and they're on to the next, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how we're supposed to live. And it's fear that makes us stop that. So if you ever want to unblock fear, we always wanna work with our throat chakra. And so then after that, we have our third eye and our third eye is our intuition, but it's also our clarity. It's how do you see the world from your inner self, right? So a lot of third eye will be blocked because a lot of people will put emphasis on what other people see instead of what we're seeing. And if we look at our eyes, we're perceiving from within ourselves. So why are we taking on the reality of what other people say and using their perception? And so the third eye to tap into your intuition, your first step is trusting the way that you see life mm -hmm. and without other people's narratives on it. So your third eye is your connection to the divine. It's the connection to you. It's connection to your inner essence, it's connection to everything. And so your third eye is how you see the world. And I always find it really interesting because your third eye is connected to your sinuses and your sinuses is how you breathe in life. Mm -hmm. And you're able to push the energy throughout your body because you know, your, um, your air quality is what makes you have good circulation. So everything starts with your perception. And so after that, we go to our crown chakra and your crown chakra is your connection to source. It's your connection to the universe. It's your connection to nature. It's how you perceive and feel and are protected by everything around you and that understanding and that knowing, right? So a lot of people that have migraines stem in this area, right? Because when we have migraines at some subtle level, we feel out of control, whether it's our body feels out of control, whether we feel out of control. And a lot of people started getting migraines in this past year with COVID because we feel like we don't know what to do, right? We're out, we're sporadic, we can't function. And, but when you're connected to your crown chakra, then you know that the universe is protecting you. And when you are able to take that slow down, you notice all the ways and the means that you have to achieve your goals because you step outside this rigid belief, like this is the only way. But when you're connected to your crown, it's your creative inspiration of like, this is what I want. I know the universe will make it happen because this is what I want. And when you tap into that, when you take a break from what you're like perceiving, right? Like you take a break from what's happening bodily and you go within and you meditate, you always have these like creative notions that seemingly come out of nowhere, but that nowhere is the everywhere that's always connected to you through your crown. Yeah. Um, I just saw like, 
I just saw like the activation of the light body, the rainbow body, you know, just seeing it as all these colors that, but it took like reaching the, your description of the crown chakra and allowing those things in that's in and around you all the time, whether or not you're going to let it, um, that I just saw that being the real strong connector. And I saw the rainbow in my mind. It's like, that's the key to the rainbow body. And it doesn't matter if you have these other areas down, if you're lacking that particular connection and you don't see that you are connected to all of that, that you are a part of source, that you're plugged in um, and you just have your switch. Cause really you're plugged in, but you just have the switch off. And when we turn that switch on that rainbow body powers on, and then we become that light, that light rainbow body. So it was just a really cool picture that I saw in my head while you were um, describing that. I so, love that. Yeah. And it's it's so important, right? Because this also relates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And it's, if we feel safe, that's not just a root chakra thing, that's a crown chakra thing. Because if we're safe within our body, we're also safe within our understanding that everything around us is working for us, that we are yeah. protected and guided every step of the way. And once you have that, once you feel safe in your structure, you are connected and you're able to regenerate the way that you were meant to right like our bodies are phenomenal the only yeah. thing that prevents it from getting to that space is our ability to surrender and know that we're connected like we're connected to everything that ever will be it's not outside of us like yeah all of it all of it is within us and around us at all times in a bubble <laughs> and that's why i've seen that the biggest the issues that are taking place in people's lives and i never want to feel over imposing about it but i always see that it's a separation from spirit mm -hmm. and it's like you know all always it's always a separation from spirit when they have these experiences and they're pulled out of that alignment or a lot of mental health issues, it's like a separation from spirit. Because if you were connected to spirit and you had that activation and you were allowing that information to come through, um, it would it, it'd power everything along and everything would be back back online again um and at least like not if it's not immediate you still it it all starts gravitating towards that alignment center but everyone has been taught so much to disconnect from the spiritual body because that's their power if they knew that they had that they would you know if they understood these energy centers and how they work if we were taught that in school you know and when we were growing up that's now being taught but like when we were growing up, it wasn't something that was part of the curriculum. But if yeah. we knew that, then people would be powerful and they would understand that they're powerful people. Um, so that crown, that just you bring the crown into the conversation, it was really like that's standing out for me about understanding that that issues stem from that that separation from spirit, their own spirit, which is all that. I love that because that was one of the things that I channeled recently this year, uh, last year, it was September last year was the main message. And it, it was like, don't let those that have severed their ties to spirit make you untether yours, teach them how to rethread and mm. realign because that is our job, right? Like, yeah. and if you think about it that way, the way that you said it, right? Like it's the disconnect from spirit that breeds you know, warfare, it breeds warfare from the subtlest level to this, you know, national level or international level, right? Yeah. It's separation from spirit. And once you understand that, that people are, are reacting or misbehaving or like, we're being mean, right? Like, let's just make it basic. When people yeah. are being mean, it's because they're not connected to themselves, right? Like yep. nice people, want, happy people want everybody to be happy. It's like, you're like Oprah of happiness when you're connected to spirit. You're like, I just want you to know how happy and powerful you are. But when you take that shift, when you see somebody that's struggling, when you see somebody that's combative with you, when you see somebody that's, and obviously we all dealt with that with last year, whichever end you're on, everyone, no matter what end they're siding with, everyone feels misheard, everyone feels misunderstood, and everyone feels, many people feel very aggravated. Mm -hmm. what's happening and it's like well, where did we go this way and how did we go with this and, and like how do we come back and it really is compassion and understanding that okay a lot of us have separated from spirit like yeah. how do we call it back in and the minute that you say that when you witness somebody you activate their crown chakra for them because you're noticing 
about them, their essence. And when you witness their essence, they're able to see it as well, no matter yeah. how long it's been that they've been walking around in the dark, right? I yeah. always compare it to like, I don't know if you work, I work with kids. So like, this is like a big thing for me, but like sometimes kids will be like, that's dark. Like open your eyes, open your eyes. And that's literally what it's like. Mm -hmm. When you're struggling, I'm not making light of struggling. Like I'm definitely going through depression and I, I, I empathize with it. But it really is that simple when you tap into your chakras and you feel alone and you don't. It's, it's literally like shutting your eyes really tightly and complaining yeah. about it being dark because it's yeah. not. You were literally a rainbow at all times. <laughs> so yeah. open your eyes to it and see how you can move it and shift it and call to it because like. We do, we do know what we need. It's, and we know what other people need essentially, and they need love. And so if you look at somebody with love, it activates it, right? Like, yeah. but I do love this. I love this topic because it really does, it comes down to the trick crown. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of, so go, let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. I just want to touch before we get in how, in like the ways that we can open the chakras, like how do like what is the, the kundalini energy people don't fully understand what that is that life force energy but because it deals with one of our chakras i want you to kind of just touch on it just so that people get that because it might actually pop someone's open and then they can start their 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 kundalini awakening <laughs> i love it so your kundalini is your midline i love talking about kundalini because kundalini is so your life is like a seesaw, right? And when like you can go up and down, the kundalini is when you take both ends of it and you make them perfectly balanced so that you can have this standstill. You can move and ebb and flow whenever you want, but it's that middle ground. And that middle ground is so powerful because that's the only way that you can step off and do whatever you want, right? Like, and that's the journey of kundalini. It's how you step off the cage, right? That your body is in. Because when you wake in the kundalini, you're able to move throughout dimensions right and I say that quite literally when you awaken your kundalini you can astral travel you can do this stuff and every single person that's done it has felt it where you're like your empathy awakens you feel people's body pains you feel this like if there's anything that's to be taught by that if there's anything to be taught that psychics exist and people have premonitions it's the fact that there's way more than meets the eye right and like that a lot of this is everybody can tap into it if one person can we all can and so your kundalini energy starts in your root chakra a lot of people who are psychic came with it right and so like their third eye will open and like they'll see a lot a lot of them will have mental health issues because to modern society it's crazy they're seeing everything there's like they'll whatever has ever existed and everything that will exist they're seeing it and they don't know how to harness it and so like we said the third eye like everything's open but for Kundalini to be aligned for you to understand what you're seeing, you have to go back to your root. You have to feel safe. You have to feel structured. And so the Kundalini needs to be grounded into the earth. And so what does that look like for you? Like, what does that look like? I, when people say grounding outside, you know, like you walk around barefoot, there's so much power in it because energy never dies. So when you're work walking on the earth, you are literally able to tap into every energy that's ever existed on this earth. And so when you do that, your root chakra is able to bring up the power of literally everything that ever existed. And mm. so you pull that up into your root and when your root chakra is safe, your Kundalini energy, your power energy, that middle ground energy is able to move into your sacral. And then we said with the sacral, right? The sacral is where your trauma exists. So how do you feel love again? How do you rewire that? And then the more that you work through with the self-healing, a lot of people call the shadow work. The shadow work is going where, you know, you, it's gotten foggy. It's gotten a little foggy in different areas of you because you closed your eyes, right? Every time you felt pain, you closed your eyes. And so in those areas, you open your eyes again in these certain little areas so that it's not shadowy or fogged up or whatever you want to call it. And so the more you do that, so when you go to your sacral, you do that and you do it with your solar plexus, you open your eyes to how powerful you are. You open your eyes to the light that you shine onto other people. You open your eyes to how charismatic you are, right? And I don't care if you're not talkative, right? Like I'm super talkative, but even a person that's introspective, 
there's still a light about them, right? Like you ever have a friend that's kind of an avid reader and doesn't really bring a lot, but like they, they just make you feel comfortable yeah. and they know that they're solid in their sense of like, I don't have a lot to say, but I'm here, right? That's still valuable. That's their solar plexus running strong, right? Mm -hmm. So once you do that, your Kundalini energy can move up. And so then it moves up into your heart again about love. Where have you thought that you don't love, give love properly? And where did you think that you don't receive love? Where did you think that there wasn't enough love? Where did you feel lack in the world? And so the more you do that, I like, I always hold my chakra and like, I listen to it because your body and your energetic body will talk to you. And mm -hmm. so when you do that, you're able to move your Kundalini up a little bit more. And sometimes while the Kundalini is moving through these energies, a lot of people will get hives. A lot of people will get like, sick right like i got really sick because i didn't choose to open up my chakras they opened up on their own because destiny is a big thing i've always i i personally have always felt very connected to the divine even when i shut it down i've always felt like there was something more like i've always felt that and because of that despite me not working on the physical body and just owning my traumas in a sense of like letting them drown me because my connection to the divine was so strong, the divine was like, we're not playing this game anymore. We're open up all of it. We're open up all of it. You're going to get sick. You're, you're just, and it was the energetic release, right? Because when you do that, when you do that, you're forced to listen to your body. You're forced to sit still. You're forced to do that. And that's one of the biggest thing about Kundalini. Do the breath work, do this. But more than anything, sit with yourself. Allow it to move. Be very still so it can move. Like that's all yeah. that it is. Just let it move. And so when you're in the Kundalini and you're getting sick, this is something that I always want to rewire for people is like, you're not out of alignment when you're getting sick. Sometimes I would like to say that you're in the most alignment because spirit's giving you a booster shot package of just doing the heavy lifting for you. Right. Yeah. It's like, Woman, this doesn't serve. This doesn't serve. Yeah. Right doing it. Yeah. It does it for you. Yeah. <laughs> And when you do that, and when you do it without hate, when you do it without self-critique, when you do it without judgment of what you're experiencing, it can just cut, shut off of you, right? Like, and when you do that, your Kundalini has the power to just keep moving through you and doing the heavy lifting for you and cleansing and realigning and readjusting your body so that it can work properly. Like when your body has been functioning improperly for so long while it's re-gadgeting and reprogramming it it feels crappy because you don't know what good feels like and so when it's doing that and rewire it's going under construction right and going through construction sucks but the end product is always good right like and yeah. so we want to do that and so when you go through your throat you know a lot of people that start meditating and i know that we've had this where i was like my voice doesn't want to work for a few days but it was because i was getting an upgrade right but old me in my throat chakra, when my throat chakra was just calling for love for me, and that's what I call it. I always call any pain a call to action for love because it's not a punishment. So then I did that and then my intuition grew, right? Like after it was done, if I gave it the minute that I gave, then my kundalini could move up to my crown chakra, right? And so it's just allowing it to rise. And once it gets to that top level, you feel safe. You just feel so safe coming back to that crown being connected to your root is that feeling of safety and understanding that nature works for you and through you because yeah. Kundalini is literally energy working through you, nature working through you. It's your connection to everything. And once it gets to that level, that separation no longer exists. That separation that we believe exists goes away and you start to see your connection with others, you feel grace for yourself, right? And the more patient you are for yourself and you understand your energetic body, you're able to tap into other people's energetic body and have a more intimate connection mm -hmm. with the person in front of you and people that you may not even physically see with your eyes, but you start opening up your eyes to all the things that might not have a physical body, but still exist side by side with you. And so that's the beauty of the Kundalini awakening is that it's your, it's just your power of who you are. Even if it didn't arise, you're still powerful. The Kundalini just awakens your eyes. It helps you open your eyes and open your body's wisdom to yeah. the power that you are, right? That's all the things. I hope I answered that properly. Yeah, no, it's great because people don't understand 
<laughs> fully what that means and they don't understand that they're going through it because so many people are actually experiencing it and they don't know it and it comes in waves and it comes in different levels and that's why we talk about it in clubhouse you know and having that conversation so people can understand their experience because then they can ground it and I think I, what I wanted you to do is explain that a little bit so that people can you can't you can't move through anything if you don't fully explain it you just feel like a victim to the experience so going through that was very important because that leads us into what we're talking about, which is like how to open them. So once we start experiencing those different centers or different like stagnant energies or muddiness or parts of, or illnesses, it's like, well, we can work with it by activating and opening the, the chakra systems um, and kind of how to do that. So let's go into that how how do we open them or how do we work with them what is a good what are some good tools and tips what would you say so I always like to keep things very simple right because I did all the ceremonial stuff and they do work but they work because you're intentional you were intentional you were putting all your focus on opening something and that is literally all you need is the desire and knowing that you're doing it at the moment right so Yes, all the things work like having the sage and the crystals, but the crystals, and I always want to remind people of this, the crystals simply remind you of the power that's within you. They are mirroring your power, but you activate the crystal as much as the crystal is activating you. Mm -hmm. And so your hands are your crystals. There's actually magnetic forces in your hands. Like even your tips of your fingers have magnets in them. And when you activate them, you're activating your body. And so with your root chakra, Let's make it very basic. You're, you're feeling really sick. You're imm I'm immunocompromised, right? So the, the immunocompromised people, the root chakra is usually at lack. If you are just feeling foggy, if you feel like angered, if you don't know who you are, if you're having trouble, just feeling like you belong, right? Body is more than any of those things. You want to put your hand on your tailbone, right? I like putting my hand on things. You can put your focus there. If you can't put your hands there, put your focus there. Just close your eyes and really focus on the root of your spine. Focus on the root of your spine, on the bottom of your tailbone and say that, right? Like keep saying that so you can focus your energy there. You don't have to close your eyes. I like closing your eyes because again, it's making sure your energy is succinct and clear and focused and poignant in that area. And so when you're in that area, you can even do pelvic floor um, clenches, like clench your muscles on your pelvic floor and just focus there, just focus. I like to imagine red light coming in and I imagine it coming in from every direction. I imagine all my power that I've scattered throughout life from this life to last life to any dimension. I call all my red light back to me and I ask it to give me clarity on where I need to give myself love and I sit with it. And I sit with that until I feel an emotion or I feel a tingle or I feel anything. And in that moment, I, I breathe into it deeper and more intentionally. And that could even be for two seconds. That can be for five minutes. It can be for 30 minutes. It could be while you're walking around and you're feeling a little bit tired, right? If you're walking and you notice that you feel tired in that moment, you can clench your pelvic floor and say, I'm bringing back all the red light energy into my root. Right. If you're feeling that and the minute yeah. you do that, your root chakra does what it needs to because you're telling it to. Yeah, that's all it takes. You tell it to move. <laughs> and so obviously breath work. I do pranayam, you know, the alternate nostril breathing. Um, when you breathe in through one nostril, you close and then you breathe out from the other nostril. And again, breathe in while you're closing one to close and then breathe mm. out. That helps align your chakras from your masculine side and your, or your feminine side and your masculine oh, yeah. side. Because you're doing that, you're moving your energy in a cyclical motion. And when it's cyclical, everything in your body is cyclical. All your chakras are round. And so when you're doing things that are rounder in nature, you're opening your natural essence to move in the direction it was intended to. If you're too linear in life, actually, this is a good tip. If you're too linear, if you're too focused, you're not doing it right, right? Because life is meant to move and ebb and flow. And so usually people get root chakra problems because they're too being too stubborn about mm -hmm. the, the means to their end, right? And so that's what you would do in that. And then the same thing with your solar so sacral. 
sacral is all about joy. It's all about expression. It's all about fun. So even doing artwork, right? Like just do artwork. And while you're doing artwork, I don't care if you get a pen or a, any color, right? Any color and scribble and say, I'm opening my, I'm opening my sacral. Yeah. I'm opening my screen. I'm releasing whatever trauma, pain, baggage is in my sacral. I'm opening this area and just write it, do whatever you want, but allow yourself to express because your sacral is connected to your throat chakra. So all your, there's two chakras that are always connected. So to backtrack, your root chakra and your solar plexus are connected. And that makes sense because your root chakra is your skeletal body and your confidence and your, your, your ability to stand on your own TPE. And then your solar plexus is the electricity that activates it all and your muscles and it flows. And so those two working together, make sure that you're always regenerating and rehabilitating and digesting and doing what you need to do to work together. And so when you're with your solar plexus, like, or when you're with your root and you're calling in your energy, you can also put your hand on your, the top of your abdomen and say, I'm regenerating. That's it. Just say I'm regenerating and imagine your body just being electrocuted and doing what it needs to do and grounding into the earth, you know, like imagine nature working through you to do what you need to do. And then when you're in your sacral, that's connected to your self-expression. Mm -hmm. How do you passionately emote? How do you passionately express yourself about whatever it is? I don't care if it's cooking. I don't care if it's your nails. I love doing nails. Like, I don't care what it is, right? Like I don't care if it's working out. Whatever it is that you enjoy, look at a butterfly, right? Like if you can look at a butterfly with joy, you know that your sacral chakra is doing pretty well today. And so like do that. And so with your sacral, again, close your eyes, imagine all the energy come in and be really direct and say you're sorry to it. I always apologize to my energy centers and I say, I'm sorry that I forgot to listen to you. I'm sorry that I left you somewhere. Let's come back now, you know? And like, I call it back and I remember. And sometimes if you don't want to sit there, and remember your trauma, that's okay too. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Your energy understands itself. And so you go to your sacral and just say, I'm bringing my creativity and my natural innocence back to me, wherever it may have been left. And you just call it and you envision light coming there. And then the same thing with your solar plexus. And in solar plexus, I always like to say that I'm digesting life. I am digesting life. I take everything in and everything that I digest becomes nutrition for me because that is the power of activating your energetic body that the food that you eat, even if it's a little unhealthy, you can actually make it healthy when you mm -hmm. say it's healthy. And like, I'm not saying you have to live in balance. I'm not saying that, but I do that. Um, with the medicine, and I've taken medicine that are like mini doses of chemo and I'm allergic to it. And so I pray on it. I'm like, please give me what I need. You know, like you are healing for me. You are giving me everything that I need in my body. And I'm so thankful to you. And so when you're able to digest whatever it is that you're presented with, with love, that's all they can give you. You have set the intention of it, you know, and that's your power of intention. And so when you're at your solar plexus, when you're able to say that, a lot of people have a lot of allergies that have a weak solar plexus because somewhere along the line, whether it be this life or last life, they were told or experienced that life is always attacking them. And so you rewire that by saying, no matter what anybody else's intention was, I receive it with love. And then you get that way and you get the healing of it. And when you do that, the next step is your heart chakra, right? That's stacked right on top of it. And so when you're able to do that, then you are able to express love and give love and feel love because our natural essence is to be that way, right? We're naturally like cuddly people. Like we're naturally, we naturally want to look at people with wonder. It's just along the way we were taught, you should fear this and you should fear that. And that's why people say fear is the only thing you should fear because there's no reason for it. And and, you know, I have experienced this in my life as I open my chakras and I did the Kundalini. There are people that annoy me. Like, you know, people are rude. Like it doesn't stop people from being rude. But when you're opening your heart chakra and you see someone being rude, you just, you can touch your own heart. Or you can just tap right here. I do that. I just tap. Mm -hmm. I start tapping here when I meet someone that's rude to me because it reminds me that my heart can heal them. And that is how you activate the connection with you and that other person, as well as your own power of moving all that energy. And then every time you do that, I just tap your heart chakra. It, like I do this every day and I just kind of sit here and that's why I wear a necklace that sits in this area. So it's, um, 
It's actually a gun with the ohm. So it's the center of the universe and protection. It has all the, um, all the nine planets on it. And I wear mm. this on my heart chakra so that I always know that I'm connected to everything. So everything that I met with was a gift mm -hmm. from the divine. So from the crown chakra to your heart chakra, and those two are connected, your heart and your crown, your heart and your third eye. So like up here, you want to always just bring them all together, right? So if you're here and you're, you're believing that people are good, you see the good in them. And that's the power of it. And once you see the good in people, you understand how to communicate with them, which is why this is in the center of your heart and your root. I mean, your heart and your um, third eye. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that connection is so powerful. Because if you understand how to communicate to people, there's no miscommunication. And when you're able to do that, you transmute whatever hardship that might have been in your soul contract, it becomes very beautiful and healing for the both of you. And then every person they interact with, they start activating from this level. Yeah. And so that's kind of how you, you just activate your chakras by remembering that they exist with you and exist in the other person. And so with the throat, whenever this is closed up, I always pull it back. I always pull it back because I ask myself, is what I'm speaking about connected with who I am as a person? So like I always take my vocal cords and I push it back this way. So when my throat hurts or I find myself being more angry, I always just massage it backwards to tell mm. myself, what am, I, what am I speaking of right now? Is it aligned with love? Is it aligned with truth? Is it beneficial to the people that are hearing it? Is it going to be received with love? And if it's not, then I need to rewire what I'm writing and what I'm saying. And so while I do this, I bring my heart chakra into my throat chakra and I tell myself whatever comes out is going to speak to their heart. And when you do this, you activate this area. And when you do this and you want to talk to people with love, you're able to notice why the people that didn't talk to you in love, what they were going through. And that helps you forgive them. And yeah. that helps you rewire all the programming. So these just little tricks in this area. And then with my third eye, when I don't know what I want to do, I don't move forward because there's a reason that I'm being blocked and being blocked means a detour. It doesn't mean there's no other road that yeah. doesn't exist. It just means there's another road, right? Like the one that you wanted to go on isn't for you. So what road do I go on? And just really focusing in on the center of your third eye and just like calling in the direction. I like to envision a blue sky. I like to envision water. I like to envision a beach. I like to envision myself on a plane, right? Like whatever it is that feels right for you. I just envision myself sitting on a plane or whatever, flying. If you wanna fly, I like to do that too. Like mm -hmm. envision yourself flying and notice where your eyesight lands, right? Like notice what you feel. Where does your body naturally land into? Where do you touch down to? And until you touch down, keep focusing on it because your inner self will tell you. And the minute, and with anybody, I act like Miss Frizzle. I do that, you know, the mag magic school bus. So I use my third eye to understand people I don't understand. So I'm like, all right, let's Miss Frizzle up into her. And I do it through my third eye and I, you know, get my magic school bus in and I ask them what they need. And so it's always, your third eye can be activated that way. And it will always, always help you just focus on it traveling with you. And your crown chakra is always open. You just have to say, thank you. Yeah. In this area, just always give gratitude. I always like to focus above my crown chakra. There's an eighth chakra too. And so these two areas work well together. And the best way to activate it is just say that I know you exist and I'm so thankful for you. And the minute you do that, you'll always receive the help that you need. It's just that they need you to ask for help. They need you. You need to ask yourself for help to be able to get help from yourself. And so always working with these or just simply communicating with yourself the way that you understand and allowing that to just guide the way for you. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest takeaway is that um, people, and that's why I teach people. I'm like, talk to your body, talk, and not only talk to your physical body, but talk to the non-physical bodies. And that takes it into that other, that other level. Um, and people think that these things can be so difficult and they don't understand energy or light. Um, and as you're saying, I pull in light. Well, they, it's it, uh, an important thing to remember that everything is light. Everything is vibration and frequency. So even when you're saying I pull in light, it's like people don't understand that they can pull that in. 
because they don't fully understand that everything is light yeah. um, and you draw it in, you ask for it and it's simply communication and, and that intention. And that's why you can speak it, you can think it, um, you can energetically pull it um, and there's different ways and it's not that complicated. You just have to be, you have to intend for it, like you said, and set the intention to do so. Um, and I think that that was the biggest the biggest takeaway really is like start a communication with your energetic bodies, you know, like not and your physical body, but begin the communication and strengthen the relationship between that. But I think it was really important that people took an understanding of each different main one. As you said, there's an eighth one above and there's so many others that exist. Yeah. We're just focusing on like the hand chakras when you were talking about energy and electricity, I was like, yep. Like that turns on for me so hard and I can, dogs get really attracted to me after I touch them and they'll come and sit and wait for me. They'll, if I've met them once, they'll come back and sit and wait for me to do it. And I just put my hands on them because they can feel, because these are turned on, you know, um, like all the time. So, yeah. I love that. I love the way that you said that. And like that, it is all light, right? Like everything we see, we see because of light. That's not an energetic thing. That's a science thing, right? Yeah. Like it's literally light that we're being reflected upon. I'm yeah. like, and so it's science. <laughs> it's science. It's, and that's what it is. There's just different levels of this light that we're perceiving. Yeah. And like, why do people get sadder with seasonal depression? Like we need light. We need to see the full spectrum of light. And why is it when you look at a rainbow, you find it yourself so happy? Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you see a rainbow, I don't care who you are. You're looking at that rainbow. You're like, yeah. oh, it's all good. Yeah, everybody. Because it resonates with who you are. You yeah. are the rainbow. That's why uh -huh. you feel so giddy. Like, and so like calling in lights. And I always tell people, if you're not somebody that is visual like obviously you and I are very visual people get clothes that color like I wore green today because I wanted my heart chakra to speak through me so mm. I specifically wore green because I wanted that energy to come forward if I want to be more confident I'm going to wear red if I want to be more playful I'm going to wear orange you know if I want to be more communicative I'm going to wear blue and if you want to get a physical light bulb that color get a physical light bulb that color yeah to things that feel right like make the adjustments until your internal body instinctually will turn it on for you and that goes with the food too so even though you're saying talking about the colors like a, an important thing to add here is that the foods you eat and the colors of those foods will also correspond with those chakra centers as well always always that's it's, and you know what, speaking of food, I love that you said that because that is one of the most important things that I do too. Like I always start my day with a green drink and yes, it's energetic. It's obviously physically very good for you, but if you're able to look at something that you're like, oh, this is nutritional. Also say how much energetic healing you're getting from it, right? Because that's how you activate it. Like that's why, you know, when people say like made with love, like why does food taste better when like your grandma or whoever it is that cooks it is like the most lovey sing songy person while they're cooking, you can taste that in the food. It could be yeah. mac and cheese, but that mac and cheese hit different when it's from somebody that for sure cooks with love, right? It could be yeah. mac and cheese, but if it's cooked with love, you feel it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's that nostalgia or whatever else, but yes, the food that you eat, the colors that you eat and everything in your life is your diet. And I think it's really important to understand that. And I love that you brought that out with food because um, I like pineapples a lot because, because I work on my confidence more than most other people do. And like not in it because I need to, like that's what I mean. Like I know that one of my main things that I wanna work on is being confident and being, knowing that I'm allowed to shine vibrantly and whatever else. So pineapples always feel really good for me. And so mm -hmm. like being able to pick a fruit, but like when I eat it, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be confident. So like, I let it know, like I let it know. And when I eat it, it alchemizes in my body that way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really interesting. And like, you know, what's funny, pineapples, I'm gonna talk about physical illnesses with your chakra a little bit too. Um, the food that you eat is connected to your chakra is always very interesting because then you can figure out where your trauma is, right? So like pineapple, so since we're talking about pineapples, pineapples are really good for asthma. And 
the reason is so pineapples and asthma because your confidence is low, right? Why are you not able to take deeper breath? Your asthma is connected, asthma and itself is connected to your lungs and your throat chakra. But the thing is, the minute that you think that you need to suppress how much you give and receive, it's in this two area, right? So it's an energetic block right here of being suffocated from speaking your truth. It's an energetic block of believing that you're allowed to take full deep breaths. Like, what is it that you're trying not, to, what are you trying to escape from, right? Like, why do you feel like you're not allowed to take up space? And that's why pineapples are really beneficial because mm -hmm. yes, Physically, we can go into the nutrition, but we're talking about energy right now. Energetically, why are you not feeling confident enough to be fully present in this very moment, right? Because if you think about breath, and I do a lot of breath work with people, and that's the best way to open up your chakras, is just taking a full enough breath to breathe through your entire lung cavity, which goes all the way down, right? Like we breathe like our lungs are just right here, but it's literally the, the mass of our back, right? Yeah. And so of course, we're not functioning properly. So in this moment, to believe in the most of it, just confident to take up space one and know that everything that you're experiencing in this minute was destined for you and was going to love you. And so it's your confidence in this moment that allows you to breathe it all in intentionally because you want to take it all in. And when you do that, through your food, through whatever you heal your throat chakra and you heal your heart chakra and you heal all these areas in you simply because you trust it, right? And so I love thinking about how are you digesting life and how you're, what foods you're eating and all that things because everything in your life is your diet, everything. Yeah. The people you hang out with is your diet, you know? Like I know the minute I met you, Derek, I started getting more confident and silly and like happier. <laughs> I can honestly say you were the best addition to my diet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God, it's funny. I love that. And it's so true. It really is true. The diet comes in so many different flavors and colors and, uh, and that, and that, it, that really does work with the chakra system and opening them up and making sure that they are activated online and working with us um, in the best way that will help us achieve what we want to in our life, to stay in flow, to attract everything. And I think that's uh, amazing. And I think that we gave a lot of good information today about um, understanding it which is what it was really important is to understand that. Um, and then we went into Kundalini, which was a little bit, I, we took it there, which I'm glad we did because that's one, a big one. Um, and just putting all these things together for people to understand how they are interrelated, how they affect each other and how we are able to refill those buckets of love into those spaces. So I think, I think it was really good information. I know we could like literally go on forever about everything, but um, I appreciate all of this. Do you have a, um, uh, well, first of all, tell people how they can find you. Oh, so I am on Instagram. I did start my TikTok because I'm going to start making videos. Um, so it's Sheel Buta, S-H-E-E-L-B-H-U-T-A.com if you want to look at my website, but you can find me on Instagram. You send me a DM. I'm really good about those, but I'm also on Facebook and all the different social media sites. So pretty easy to find me with my name. <laughs> Wonderful. And what is a parting message that you have for anybody that's watching at this time or listening on the audio portion? Believe in your capacity to heal. Believe that you know what you need. Believe that you are your inner guide, your inner guru, and trust that every single person you interact with is a messenger for you. And if you're able to tap within the message that you're received with love, you'll be able to decode all the things that you're meant to experience. And so just embrace it and you will be able to reap the rewards of it. It's just an embracing life that you reap the rewards of it. It's perfect. And I agree wholeheartedly with that statement. Well, thank you so much for being here all the way from Asgard to give us the downloads of our energy centers and how to replenish them. I think that um, there was a replenishing even by just talking 
like about this. I think there was a lot of energy work that was actually done. Um, and I think that everyone that will watch this or listen to it just received a chakra clearing and balancing and, <laughs> and activation as it is. So here it is. This was actually just opening them up for you. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you. And we uh, we hope if you have any questions, you reach out to Sheila, you reach out to me. Uh, we are here for you to um, explore your own energy bodies. And uh, thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity. And Thank you. <laughs>